From the Chum Television Building in downtown Toronto, Bravo presents Live at the Rehearsal Hall, hosted by Lance Chilton. Since the release of her album Let It Die, her star has been on the rise with two Juno Awards and international critical acclaim. She's been described as one of the warmest, purest voices you'll ever hear. Please welcome Feist. When I was a young girl, I used to seek pleasure. Oh, yeah. When I was a young girl, I used to drink it all out of the ill house. Down into the jail house My body is hell beating Hell is my Hi everybody, I'm Lance Chilton. Welcome to the rehearsal hall. Our guest tonight is Feist. Quick bio. As an indie artist, Feist traveled the country from one side to the other, playing stages big and small with some very, very good bands as well as on her own. And then a couple years ago, packed it up and went to Paris because that's what Canadians do. While in Paris, she did what Canadians do. She found success. She got a record deal, put a hit on the charts, which proves that the best way to find success as a Canadian artist is to go somewhere else. 
And she did. She just won a couple of Junos here. Very well deserved. We're great. We're happy. It's great that she's back home here in Canada tonight performing from her disc, Let It Die, as well as a bunch of other stuff, too. Here's Feist. Everybody live at the rehearsal hall tonight. Our guest is Feist. Leslie, it's very nice to meet you, and it's very nice to have you here. Thanks, you too. You, you started as a musician in Calgary as a, as a young teenager, and then you, you came to Toronto to get your voice fixed, which is another story altogether. And, and you played with some terrific bands, two of my favorites, By Divine Right and Broken Social Scene. And, that, and going well, a Broken Social Scene won a Juno Award, and then you pack your bags and you go to Paris. What, what was the, uh, the catalyst for that? Why did you decide to pick it up right in the middle of a good thing and take off? Well, I was also collaborating with another Canadian. I was spending a couple, I spent a couple years in Europe with Gonzalez, who used to have a band here named Sun. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I, we just decided to record some of these uh, demos that I'd made in, in my apartment in Toronto. I brought yeah. some he, demos to Europe. So he lured you there? Well, he sent me a ticket. And you know, when someone sends you a ticket to you Europe, go. you go. <laughs> So, and you don't ask many questions. No. Um, so I went and, uh, and we started to record some of these demos in between tours. If we'd have a few days off, we, go, we went to Paris to record. And then after uh, a few of those sessions, we had what we slowly realized was a record. But yeah. accidentally, it happened like that. Now, you said that recording Let It Die in Paris was, it was incidental. It could have been Texas. It could have been Tuk Tuk Tuk. Doesn't much matter. Which, which is funny because a, a city like that, you'd expect it maybe to have a little bit of an impact on, on your work. But Well, it had that kind of soft lens 
you know, foggy romanticism to it. But in a way, uh, the fact that I knew no details about it and it knew nothing about me, I, yeah. it was a clean slate. I think if I'd been making these demos in Toronto, say, and there was... All your pals. All my pals yeah. around and I would have played them some rough, rough, rough mix. I would have been too intimidated to go on if one of them had raised an eyebrow. You know, I would have thought, oh, what am I doing? But yeah. this way I was able to just... Yeah, I don't know. It was anonymity. Ignore your friend's Safety opinion. Safety and anonymity. Yeah. <laughs> and ignore my friend's opinions. <laughs> so, and, and I kind of made a, a, a sort of a flip remark about, you know, the, one of the best ways to succeed as an artist in Canada is to, to leave. Yeah. But was, it's kind of the way it's happened for you. I was sort of excited you. you said that on camera. I didn't, couldn't believe that you said that on camera. Because uh, it, it, it's, it's not totally true, but there is some truth to it, you know. I think that once something comes back again with some dust on it from somewhere interesting or somewhere foreign or right. elsewhere, you know, capital E, elsewhere. All then of a sudden it, it's good. All of a sudden it's, oh, I mean, have you? <laughs> well, See, I'm not, not the only one. Fault. Yeah, I mean, no. it's just a, tra a fact. I mean, one thing I noticed about Canadians writing songs about traveling is we sing in, in miles. We sing about... 10 miles down. Mm. Nobody ever sings about kilometers, and that's just like a stupid <laughs> little example of what I'm talking about. But if you can write a song with the word kilometers in it that sounds good, you'll get the order of Canada. Because <laughs> it's no easy... But here, So we're friendly, we're polite, and suspicious of success. I guess that's what it, what it boils down to. Your father, I understand, is, or is an art professor and, and warned you uh, at an earlier age about um, the challenges and difficulties of making a living as an artist and the fact that you know maybe two or three out of any graduating class will 10 years from now be still working still as artists and, and yeah. yeah and and you went ahead and did it anyway so i'm wondering what the recent feedback is uh well i i uh, i think my folks are probably both happy that i finally made a record that they will put on of their own free will <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that let's hear some more of it well thanks all right here's okay. feist Try to 
as long as you can bear Baby's got something to do with Admit that you just can't go through it alone Let a man on your secret heart
continue. Welcome back live at the rehearsal hall tonight. Our guest is Feist. As we mentioned earlier, she took off to Paris, got a record deal, uh, critical and commercial success, and a great band. Would you like to introduce them? My pleasure. Okay. The fellow on the organ here is Pierre-Luc Jamin. This is Julien Chirol. And back there is Vincent Tégère. The irony is that they won't be playing on the next song, so. <laughs> but don't leave. All right, here's Feist. Here's your inside note. What are we gonna 
inside. You set my head up like a bird's nest. And so you make me forget all the rest. And you fear, then I saw that I was all alone. Your location, I did not know. It was a dream, nothing more, nothing less. I guess you still look at the things I regret. That's why I'm.
rehearsal hall tonight is Feist. Sitting here listening to you play, I, you, you cover the Bee Gees and you do traditional songs and, and you cover Ron Sexsmith with equal aplomb and conviction. And uh, I, I wonder what your, what the thing is that, that you look for in a piece of music that makes you think that you're going to do it, outside of the stuff that you write, because there's all this wonderful variety in what you do. Well, um, I guess I had to face facts a few years ago and realize that I've, I haven't dived deep into any particular genre. I'm not really, I was, I'm not of a school of any kind of music, you know, and in my case, uh, I just became a kind of a melody, that was my genre. Yeah. I, I just, melodies are kind of the core, and, and uh, in the case of the four track demos I'd made, um, I wasn't a really a producer by any stretch of the imagination. I'd done it on my four track and cranked the reverb and the compression so it sounds really yeah. the cars driving by and stuff like that. And when Gonzalez, who I was on tour with in France, started lifting those melodies out of that context and playing them on the piano, that's when I kind of realized that you know, instrumentation can kind of be like clothing around a melody and, sure. and you know, you're wearing jeans and a t-shirt, you function in one way and if you put on the ball gown, maybe you can go and do something else. And but same person inside. Same person inside. Yeah. And yeah. But yeah, so um, melodies is kind of the center and maybe that's why I end up playing covers that seem uh, like they wouldn't get along under any other circumstances. So in terms of your next album, have you thought about what it's going to sound like or what the songs are going to be? Uh, well, yeah, I've been touring for a year now with these songs from this record, and, and it's just like anyone on, on certain nights. I'm, I'm like this with certain songs, and on other nights I don't want to hang out with certain songs. <laughs> and But every night there's a few that I'm happy to see. Like, they walk in the door, hey. And so, so um, and those have been uh, Gatekeeper, I think because it's just melody mm -hmm. centered and very simple arrangement. And um, when I was a young girl, because I, I love taking, um, I love playing these traditional songs that that I, I've heard in the context of <clears throat> the American folk anthology, the Smithsonian Folkways put mm -hmm. out. And those songs, uh, field recordings, field recordings, yeah. exactly from the early 1900s into the 50s, and and the sounds of those, you can hear the clotheslines squeaking, and you can yeah. hear the chairs in the kitchen creaking, and it's aud audio, audio, audible photographs, and dusty so, old photos, like dusty old photos. Yeah. And s exactly, so I like creaking open the shoebox from the attic, pulling one out and trying to bring it into this context. And so I, that, and I'm going to play another one of those that I try to rearrange. We're going to hear that. That's yeah. right. Thanks for coming. It's great to meet Thank you. Thank you so we much. We wish you continued success. Thank and you. And thanks also to you for being here tonight. You've been a wonderful audience. Feist.
Thank you so much. 